Hello and welcome to Big Air TV. Today we're going to talk about a Big Air H2O stainless tower installation for your boat. Uh, first of all, let's just talk about what the tower is and what you get when it shows up at your door. First of all, how does it show up? It shows up in a box delivered to you by UPS or FedEx or some delivery service. Um, the box does not need a forklift, it doesn't need a freight truck. You just set it by your door and you're ready to go. Uh, what do you get inside there? You get all these pieces. Uh, what's exceptional about an H2O? Well, we've, this is a very tried and true tower. It's stainless steel tubing for the legs and corners. And what's beautiful about stainless steel tubing is, is that we put a, what we call a brush or po brush slash polish finish on there. And so it's very durable. It won't um, be damaged by the environment. Uh, if you ever do mark it with something, you just hit a little scotch bright and it's just right back like it was. So it's a very durable finish. It's amazing. We've, we've seen towers that are 15, 20 years old and they still look great. So no problem there. Um, these are our front legs, our rear legs, our corners. This is our H member. We use what we call a double top bar or a double H member there. And what that does means you're using two corners per side, which gives you a very rigid, strong tower. Uh, some other highlights. We use a very high precision fit on our connections from our legs to our corners. So we want to make sure it's a very, very tight tower. Um, other parts that we get are our T-braces here, our collars, and our struts, and this is our parts box. So this is everything that you get and everything you need for the installation, including your mounts, your stainless steel heims, all that stuff is right here. Uh, some cool points I want to talk about real quick on the H member here is um, a removable top mount. We have swiveling um, eyelets here, but you can take this off and put a navigation light adapter on there, and that's going to allow you to be legal on the water per Coast Guard regulations at night. Um, you can see the engraving on the tees here. They look great. Uh, check out the finish on those and the engraving. Same things on the H member. Uh, just some really beautiful finishes. Uh, this tower is ready to start installation, so let's get on the next step and start putting this thing together and get it onto the boat. All right, these are the basic hardware pieces that we have that come in our parts box for this particular tower, the H202. We'll start out with our quick release knobs, our aluminum bases, our backer plates, rubber gaskets, swivels, and these are the bolts actually to connect the swivels to the bases. And this is our stainless steel hardware that goes through and connects through the boat, the backer plates. Now these are drill bits for the stainless tower and the same go for these, so these aren't relevant. And we're gonna take these parts and put them together real quick and install them on the hull of the boat. Okay, we're gonna talk about leveling. Um, some towers need it, some don't. Single bar towers is not so critical. On this installation we're doing here for this chapter, we're gonna talk about how to level front to back specifically. Now, we're using the floor of the boat as our standard, and so we put a standard level, fairly long one, we like a three or four foot, we sampled in several places across the floor and leveled the boat using the jack and make sure our side to side is level too. Same thing, check sample and get the average there. So with the boat level at the floor, now here in the studio today, we're gonna go and use what we call a water level. It's a great trick, you can get some clear tubing from your hardware store suck water backwards from a bottle or something into it so you fill it up virtually full. Right now, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a water line right here and here. I've got a little flick there, you just flick and it cleans up. So now I can tell wherever I set one mark to be level, I can move this to the back of the boat or in this case we're going to go about 43 inches back on this installation and it'll be exactly level. So I can go over and check the other side of the boat on the outside too. And this is a great confidence inspire. Once again, clear tubing at your hardware store, suck some water into it, find level, and it's just a big U-tube. And this line matches that line. It's an it's a old, old technique, and it's a great way to check your boat in the multiple positions. But remember, not all towers demand that you be level. Uh, you can adjust them, but more often a lot of uh, dual or top bar towers like to be leveled in certain situations. So if your installation for your particular tower that you're doing requires that, a water level is a great trick and a great way to do it. Okay, we've leveled, we've leveled our boat. This particular tower we're doing in this video set is to be horizontal or matching level to the floor. So we've, we're set up that way. We know our front to back distance for this tower is approximately 43 inches. So we're going ahead and we've taken the gasket. It's a great way to cheat. And we've decided this is our hole where we want to go through. We know we have access on the inside. We've checked that and we have access 43 inches back. Always check to make sure you can get to these points. 
So in this tower, I know where I'm at. I've gone in here. I've actually pre-made my circle to make it easier for the video. And I've got a circle here, and then I used a bubble level, and I've actually got my other circles right here. And so a gasket is a great way to lay up against the hull and check it. And we use one in this case, we leveled them again. We talked about bubble levels and other chapters there. And then I'm going to go ahead and drill through here with a pilot hole and then the, the 3 8 hole in this particular tower. And then we'll dress it with a stone here. All right, we've got our holes marked out. We're ready to drill. In this case, we need a final hole of 3 8 inch diameter. I'm going to use a quarter inch hole as my, my premier start bit. A lot, you can run it backwards, you can run it forwards on the through hole. In this case, this is not my finish hole. I'm going to go ahead and go with my drill direction in a forward direction and it should be fairly easy. She wore safety glasses, but I don't have them on today. But. And it's just, just that easy. And then I'm gonna come in with my 3 8 bit, and then we'll do the finish stone. Okay, we've done our pilot hole. I'm gonna go ahead and run in reverse for the main hole, which is 3 8 hole, so I'm using a 3 8 bit. I'm gonna actually run my bit in reverse so I don't damage the gel coat. Coat. I've done a little pre-drill here to save some time and we'll, we'll finish up here real quick. Now like I said, I did cheat. I pre-drilled some, but as you saw, I finished up running the bit in reverse to protect the gel coat. Okay, we've got the hole drilled. We drilled in reverse on the main bit for the 3 8 hole. We're just doing one here because there's no need to show them all. And we're going to go ahead and run our stone in this forward direction, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to use this type of stone. You can buy it at Ace Hardware or any place like that or Lowe's, Home Depot. And it just cleans up the ragged edges on your gel coat to stop damage of crack propagation in your gel coat. So watch what to do here. It's very simple. And it puts a nice little chamfer on there and you're good to go. Okay, we're going to talk about one of the secrets sometimes that our customers worry about and how to overcome these obstacles, and that's interior access. A lot of boats have a simple panel you can reach up underneath and access by hand and put your backer plates and your fasteners on the backside. However, some don't. They have these interior panels, in, as you see right here. But one of this, we'll show you a couple secrets, and this works out real well in this uh, video here. Is, in this tower installation, we're running about 43 inches front to back stance. And so we've actually pulled the speaker hole, speaker out here. So we've got access there. I can reach up right in there, very easy. And so I'm kind of planning this in advance. That's where we always measure and make a plan of attack on a tower installation. And then this interior panel, you're like, well, I don't know how to remove that. Well, it's really quite simple. I've gone in and removed two screws, and I'll show you where they were. They were located here and here. Now I'm going to go and lift it off with something called J hooks. And you can see here's some holes that were cut there. And the panel in here are the screw tabs right here that I took out. They were just uh, Phillips head screws. So I've taken those out and you can see the, the hooks or the pieces here, latches here. It just hangs on that and there's where the screws went there. So what I'll do now is you can go down to Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace, whatever, and get you a, I recommend a four inch hole saw. You'll need that to be able to get your hand through. And I'm gonna cut a hole. I'll have to find out exactly where the right position is to access my mount the best. I'll cut it here, and then as soon as we put our panel back over, the problem's solved. So simple, we're gonna go on drill this hole next, but this shows you how we set up for this access hole. Okay, let's do it. It's scary, I know you're intimidated. I promise you, this is fiberglass, we're gonna be just fine. I've got, my, my actual mount is out here, approximately right where my hand is, and so I'm just in line here, I'm below where my interior panel goes. I'm avoiding my hooks or my latch pieces here, so I'm ready to pop a hole in this. I know it's scary, but watch with me how easy it is. I've just started my hole. Shouldn't take long. There you go. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and install our base through the holes that we drilled in the hull of this boat. So we've already done these earlier. They're good to go. They're dressed out, deburred, and clean, whatnot. So here's my base. It's an aluminum CNC base that we machine here. And then I've got my stainless bolts going through there, 3 8 bolts and a rubber gasket. Now they're gonna go through the hull easily through the holes we drilled there. But on the interior, what you're gonna have is a rubber gasket as seen here. 
that's going to sandwich this out of the hole and then this aluminum plate will come up and we'll actually sandwich if you will the hull of the boat and then we're going to go ahead let me get the hardware so forgive me for a second we're going to get our stainless nut and lock washers sorry i can't put everything in my hand at the same time but we're going to have our nut our flat washer and our lock washer so the flat washer will go up against the backer plate first then the lock washer and then the stainless uh, nut will be in place we recommend go ahead and run some loctite uh, that will help lubricate so you can get galling on your threads, stainless on stainless. And it's, we've got lock washer, but it never hurts to run Loctite. Boats get a lot of vibration. And so we'll go ahead, stab this in, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next chapter from there. Okay, we took some liberties and went ahead and put the tower together. This is an H202, as you know. We're going to run this one, this particular boat, in a forward stance. You can run it more traditional as it looks right now, or turn it around the other way in what we call a forward slant position. With that said, <clears throat> um, this is our H member here, and so once again, in this the way we're going to have a turn around the boat, it's going to be to the back, which is what you would want. Let's talk about the four corners are exactly the same on the H202. We have our T brace here, we call our strut, and our collar here. We call this straight leg or front leg here, and this is called a rear or bent leg here. And of course, these are our quick release pins here, our stainless pins. And then we've taken the liberty of also going ahead and putting our bolts in here. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about what we're doing here. So we're going to take a pause and come in and take some close-ups here. Okay, we come in to take a little bit closer look at what we've done here. And some of the keys is taking your corner and using a Sharpie marker. And before you insert it, you measure and make hatch marks with a Sharpie going out. So you can see here, here's our probably about an eight and a half inch mark or 10 inch 12 and these will wipe off with um, cleaner simple cleaners like carb cleaner brake cleaner or clean the stainless uh, will clean the mark right off so we've done all these corners so we can identify where they're at and where we want to be now the changing mindset in the way we do our tower installations is that we actually measure our boat on our mounts and let's go over here real quick and just look at this mount we still got it loose here but we know when it's in position here, from mount to mount, side to side, it was about 97, 98 inches. So we want to preload our towers. So when we put this tower together, we've actually come in six inches on that. And so we've got the base of this tower. If you look down to our heim joints on the studio floor, we've got our heim joint from side to side sitting at approximately 98 minus six, so about 92 inches. This boat is basically the same front to back. And so we set that. We also know that our distance here is 43 inches, and so that's how far our mounts are apart. Now, if you look closely here, we've gone in and we just simply have our, our T braces and loose, but we want them in place. We've taped some plastic to protect it and some uh, non stick tape there. So these are just in place to position to help us control the tower. They're not in any way fastened at this time. Now, what we did do was once we set this tower up, we leveled it on the floor, we know that our mounts are level with the floor on the boat. So what we did was we measured out, and like I said, we put six inches of preload. So once again, if I'm 98 at the mounts, we put the, the heim joints at 92. So we slid in, that's what these marks are for here. So we slid in, and then we've leveled this H member with a bubble level, and then we went ahead and drilled it on the floor. It's much, much easier to drill a tower, especially a stainless tower, on the ground. And so now that we've had these in, it's much easier and we'll do the rest later on. But if there's a few techniques, it's going slow, maybe a little bit WD-40 on your tip, and that's how you do it. But once again, leveled on the floor, as long as your mounts are level, you're going to be fine. Put the preload in, and beyond that, I can't think of any magic there. I don't want to make this video laboriously long. And so we'll go ahead and show drilling a couple of these holes real quick. And then the only other thing we did was we like our cross braces to be fairly level. And so we've gone in, if you look, there's probably a mark right there. And so what we'll do is when we get ready to drill it, we'll tap it up there and we'll drill through here. And then we'll drill through the, uh, the collar once we have it in position. And then we'll actually drill our quick release pin holes, which are 3 8 holes through here, and slide this in. The whole reason for these quick release pins here is so you can actually pull this whole tower apart and disassemble or pull, it, or pull these legs off the boat when needed. And that is basically the basis synopsis of the stainless tower, the H202. We'll go ahead and put it on the drill the holes and put it on the boat next. 
we're ready to drill stainless. I'm going to show you a trick here. Stainless desires a slow speed, so I'm using a cordless, I'll use it on the low speed. I've got the bit that we supply for drilling stainless. I'm already in the pilot hole that is supplied, you'll find on your H member, your T's and whatnot. So what I've done is I've looped this ratchet around here. On stainless, you really should have your safety glasses on. So I've got them on here today. And what I'm gonna do, as I start drilling, I'll use this like a portable drill press and tighten this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing it. I'll show you how to do it. You gotta take your time. You don't wanna break your bit. I've already gone through the first layer. And I'm through. And that's how easy it is to drill through. Okay, we're gonna talk about our final drilling of holes with our cross brace assembly. We have our stainless holes already gone through here. The tower still has some flexibility this way. This is a pre-drilled hole. We put the pin in place here. I've already started drilling this, but we're just gonna touch on just to show you. We're using a 3 8 bit on our cordless drill today to go through here. Use high speeds. This is aluminum, you don't have to slow down. It's not stainless, so this is all aluminum componentry, and so is this here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my safety glasses on and finish this hole up real quick, and then we'll talk about the next hole. All right, and I did pre-drill it some, and then I'll go ahead, this is our stainless pin, it'll slide in here. Sometimes they take a little bit of work to get through. This one's fairly easy, and I'll finish up tapping my hammer, but you can already see it's, well, here, I'll just push through by hand. Sometimes you have to chase them a few times to clean them up and to make them flow easily. Now, the last thing I'll do is this one, I'll likely go ahead and drill on my boat, but I'm gonna go ahead and set everything in place, and I'll drill it just so I get the proper stretch on the tower and the proper alignment here. Okay, we're on the last step of our cross brace assembly. We've got our pins going through, our T-brace and our strut, our stainless holes are done. These are 3 8 these are 5 16 I went ahead, this little trick I wanna teach you today is that we always like to have a tower a little bit in tension or compression. So the centers of my mount, front to back on this particular tower's installation are 43 inches. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my mounts on my tower base are at 42 and a half, at least a half inch stretch, because all everything's flexible to some extent. So that's why I measured it out to. I've actually cheated. I went in and drilled the back side of this hole for convenience so we could control this video easier. And I've started this hole here. There's always a pilot hole there, so I'm gonna put my safety glasses on and uh, finish this hole up here. It is aluminum. You can run a high speed once again. And we'll just finish this hole up here and we'll go ahead and be done with our tower, ready to go on the boat. Change my gear speeds. And there you go. And then we'll go ahead and push our pin through and we'll be done. Okay, we're done. Tower's on the boat. Due to our studio constraints, it's hard to flip it forward and backwards, so we'll take some photos out, the, out of the lake, show them to you there. But real quick, going through the tower, stainless, all made in the USA. We've got a quick release mounts down here. We'll show you how to do our cross brace system here. Show you how to set the, how to preload the tower, how to set everything, our quick release pins. If I do want to lay the tower down, I can lay it forwards or backwards. In this case, I typically am a fan of going releasing these front legs and laying the tower backwards, and then I simply pull these three pins here and this pin, and this whole entire assembly will remove. But you could do it laid forward also. But the best gain though is that I drop all this height here, and so I have a fairly small compact fitting there. So once again, preload one of the big things on this tower, six inches, it's stainless. You can tell it's very strong. Um, you can hang your whole family off there. You can do pull-ups, whatever you want. It's strong, it's ready for action. So Big Air H202 tower, you will not be disappointed. See you at the lake.